This talk is about constant length labeling schemes for faster deterministic radio broadcast. I am Faith Ellen from the University of Toronto, and this is joint work with Seth Gilbert from the National University of Singapore. Our model of computation is a fixed topology network with n nodes. It is synchronous with time divided into slots. In each time slot, a node can decide whether or not to transmit. If it does not transmit, but exactly one of its neighbors does transmit, it receives the message that neighbor sent. If two or more neighbors of the node transmit in the same slot, then the node does not receive anything. In the radio broadcast problem, the network contains one node called the source that knows a message M, and the goal is to ensure that all nodes eventually know M. The same algorithm is used by each node to determine when it should transmit. This can depend on the history of the node. For example, if the node has not yet received M, it should not transmit. If the nodes have no identifiers, there are networks, for example, a four cycle, in which deterministic broadcast is impossible. When the source node transmits the message M, both neighbors of the source node receive the message. In each subsequent round, they both transmit or neither transmits, since they are performing the same algorithm and have the same history. In either case, the remaining node does not receive the message. If each node has a distinct log n bit identifier or label, then a round robin schedule completes within O of d n slots, where d is the source eccentricity. This is the maximum distance from the source to any node. In the network illustrated here, d is equal to 2. A deterministic radio broadcast algorithm consists of two parts, a labeling scheme, which assigns a label to each node of a network, and a transmission protocol, which enables each node to decide, based on its label and its history so far, whether to transmit, and if so, what to transmit. The first interesting deterministic radio broadcast algorithm was published by Klamtak and Weinstein in 1991. They gave a know of log squared n algorithm for networks with source eccentricity 2, and then used this algorithm one level at a time to get a know of d log squared n algorithm for networks with source eccentricity d. Their algorithm assumes nodes have distinct identifiers. Over the next 16 years, there was a series of increasingly faster deterministic radio broadcast algorithms, culminating in an algorithm by Kowalski and Pelk, which uses d plus o of log squared n slots for networks with source eccentricity d. Nodes do not need distinct identifiers. Each node just has a d plus o of log squared n bit label, which indicates in which slots the node transmits, starting from the slot after it first receives the source message. Their algorithm is as fast as possible, matching a lower bound by Elon, Barnoy, Lineal, and Peleg from 1991, which says that there are networks with source eccentricity d for which omega of d plus log squared n slots are necessary. Last year at SPA, I had a paper with Gorain, Miller, and Pelk that showed two-bit labels are sufficient to perform deterministic radio broadcast for any network. Like the algorithms on the previous slide, the label of each node is carefully chosen based on knowledge of the entire network. We showed that this algorithm always completed within 2n minus 3 slots, and there are networks for which this algorithm does take 2n minus 3 slots. A question remained, is it possible to perform deterministic radio broadcast in fewer slots, still using constant size labels? My paper with Seth this year has four main contributions. First, we give a deterministic radio broadcast algorithm using four bits for each label, which completes with an O of square root of ND slots. This is better than the algorithm in the SPA 2018 paper when D is little o of N. Then we define the class of continuous broadcast algorithms, which includes both of these algorithms, and prove that any algorithm in this class requires omega of square root of ND slots for some network. In other words, our algorithm is optimal in this class. Third, we came up with a different algorithm that is not in this class. It uses only three bit labels and completes an O of D log N plus log squared N slots. This is better than any continuous broadcast algorithm if the source eccentricity D is little o of n over log squared n. The problem with this algorithm is that it is non-constructive. We rely on the probabilistic method to show that for any network, there's a good choice for the three bit labels on its nodes. Finally, we give another algorithm with three bit labels that takes slightly longer, but there is a deterministic algorithm for constructing the label of each node in a network. I'll begin by presenting the algorithm from SPA 2019 because all of our algorithms are based on it. But before that, I need a couple of definitions. A set of nodes X is said to be a dominating set for a set of nodes Y if every node in Y has a neighbor that is an X. For example, in the first and second networks, the set of brown nodes is a dominating set for the set of orange nodes. However, this is not true in the third network since the middle orange node has no brown neighbor. 
x is a minimal dominating set for y if it is a dominating set for y, and no proper subset of x is a dominating set for y. For example, in the second network, the set of brown nodes is a minimal dominating set for the set of orange nodes, but in the first network, the set of brown nodes is not a minimal dominating set for the set of orange nodes. Why are minimal dominating sets useful for radio broadcast? They have the following nice property. Suppose that X is a minimal dominating set for Y, and all nodes in X know the source message. Now consider a slot in which only the nodes in X transmit, and they all transmit the source message. Then for any node little x in x, there is some node little y in y that receives the source message from little x. Node little y is called a private neighbor of node little x. For example, the top two orange nodes are private neighbors of the top brown node, and the bottom orange node is a private neighbor of the bottom brown node. The reason this property holds is because if some node little x in the set x doesn't have a private neighbor in the set y, then removing node little x from the set x still leaves a dominating set for y. This contradicts the assumption that the set X is a minimal dominating set for the set Y. In our paper, we call the deterministic radio algorithm from SPA 2019 the dominating set mechanism. In that algorithm, each node has a label consisting of two bits, which are called the join bit and the stay bit. Slots are grouped into rounds with two slots per round, a dominator slot and a feedback slot. At the beginning of each round, three sets of nodes are defined. Informed is a set of nodes that know the source message, Frontier is a set of nodes that don't know the source message, but have at least one neighbor that does. Finally, DOM is a subset of the informed nodes that is a minimal dominating set for the Frontier nodes. In the dominator slot, each node in DOM transmits the source message. Each node in the Frontier that receives the source message in the slot is said to be newly informed. It joins a minimal dominating set for the next round, if and only if its join bit is one. Each node in DOM has at least one private neighbor in the Frontier. One such node is chosen to be its designated feedback node. If the stay bit of a node in the frontier is 1, then it transmits in the following feedback slot. A node in DOM stays in the dominating set for the next round if and only if it receives a 1 from its designated feedback node in the feedback slot. Note that only a designated feedback node has stay bit equal to 1, and there is at least one designated feedback node whose stay bit is equal to 0. The join and stay bits can be constructed by simulating the algorithm one round at a time and using a greedy algorithm to construct a minimal dominating set for the round. For example, in the first round, the minimal dominating set consists of the source node and the frontier consists of its neighbors. Each node in the frontier receives the message. They all have stay bit zero, so no node transmits in the feedback slot and the source node leaves the dominating set. The top two orange nodes have stay bit one, so they join the dominating set. In the second round, the two brown nodes are in the dominating set, and they transmit the source message in the dominator slot. The three orange nodes constitute the frontier, and two of these nodes receive the source message. The top orange node has stayed but one, so it transmits in the feedback slot. It is the designated feedback node for the top brown node, so the top brown node stays in the minimal dominating set. The top orange node also has joined bit one, so it joins the minimal dominating set. The designated feedback node for the other brown node is the bottom orange node, which has stay bit zero and join bit zero. Hence, neither of these two nodes are in the new minimal dominating set for round three. In the third round, the two brown nodes at the top are the dominating set, and they transmit the source message in the dominator slot. The two orange nodes in the frontier both receive the source message in the dominator slot, and both have their stay and join bits equal to zero, since the broadcast is complete. Our first algorithm is a modification of the SPA 2019 dominating set mechanism. We call it the level dominating set mechanism. We make use of the level of each node, which is its distance from the source node. For example, in this network, the nodes in the brown circle are in level one, the nodes in the orange circle are in level two, and the node in the yellow circle is in level three. It follows from breadth first search that the neighbors of a node in level L are in levels L minus one, L, or L plus one. First, we considered the special case when the source eccentricity is 2. In round 1, the dominating set consists of the source node, and the frontier consists of nodes in level 1. In subsequent rounds, the frontier is contained in level 2, and we choose the dominating set to be contained in level 1. Then the dominating set mechanism completes in 1 plus the minimum of the size of level 1, and the square root of 2 times the size of level 2, which is O of square root of n. In the general case, to keep the levels separate, we use two additional bits in the label of each node to record its level mod 3. In our algorithm, when a node transmits the source message, a node also sends its level mod 3. 
This enables a node that receives the message to determine whether it comes from the same level as itself, one lower level, or one higher level. In order to make our algorithm behave like the eccentricity 2 case, a node in the frontier ignores a message containing the source message unless it comes from the level one lower. We also ensure that the subset of DOM at some level L minus one is a minimal dominating set for the part of the frontier at the next level L. To prevent interference between different levels, only nodes and levels that are multiples of three apart can transmit in the same slot. For example, in rounds 1, 4, and 7, nodes at levels 0, 3, and 6 can transmit the message in the dominator slot if they are in the minimal dominating set, and nodes at levels 1, 4, and 7 can transmit in the feedback slot if they are designated feedback nodes for that round. Since there are d pairs of levels and it takes O of square root of n rounds for one level, it is easy to see that O of d square root of n rounds suffice. With a more careful analysis, we're able to show an O of square root of nd upper bound. Since each round consists of two slots, this is O of square root of nd slots. A broadcast algorithm is continuous if it satisfies this technical property, which applies to every level of every network. Both the dominating set mechanism and the level dominating set mechanism that I just described are examples of continuous broadcast algorithms. This is the weakest generalization of the two algorithms that we could come up with and prove the following lower bound. For any continuous broadcast algorithm, there is a network with n nodes and source eccentricity d that requires omega of square root of nd slots. To get our faster algorithms, we start with the dominating set mechanism from SPA 2019, but add one more bit and one more slot. The new bit is called the go bit, and the new slot is called the propagation slot. The propagation mechanism behaves the same as the dominating set mechanism in the dominator slot. The only difference in the feedback slot is that each designated feedback node transmits its go bit as well as its stay bit. In the propagation slot, a node in the dominating set transmits the source message again, if and only if it received a go bit with value one from its designated feedback node in the feedback slot. The join and stay bits are constructed as in the dominating set mechanism. However, the go bits are constructed probabilistically prior to running the algorithm. For each round R, a value P is randomly chosen between one and log N, and the go bit of each designated feedback node in round R is chosen to be one with probability one over two to the P. If P is one, then the go bit of each designated feedback node is equally likely to be zero or one, whereas if P is log N, then its go bit is one with only probability one over N. It is not too hard to show that if node V is in the frontier, then V receives the source message in the propagation slot with probability O of one over log N. This part of our algorithm is related to the randomized decay algorithm for those of you who are familiar with it, and it has similar performance. Then by a churn off bound, there's a high probability a node in level L knows the source message within O of log N plus log squared N rounds. Finally, by a union bound with high probability, every node knows the source message M with an O of D log N plus log squared N rounds. Hence, by the probabilistic method for any network, there exists a choice for all the go bits, so the propagation mechanism completes within O of D log N plus log squared N rounds. Since each round consists of three slots, this is also an upper bound on the number of slots. Thus, our algorithm, which uses only three bit labels, runs almost as fast as the best deterministic broadcast algorithm with large labels. Using a lemma that Klemtak and Weinstein used in their original paper, the go bits for each round can be constructed deterministically. We are able to prove that once every node in some level knows the source message, then every node in the next level knows the source message within 15 log squared n more rounds. Since each round consists of three slots, it follows that the propagation mechanism completes within O of D log squared N slots, where D is the source eccentricity. This is slightly slower than the O of D log N plus log squared N slots when the go bits are determined randomly. We've shown that for any network, there exists a choice for the go bits so that every node knows the source message within O of D log N plus log squared N slots. And one can deterministically construct the go bit so that every node knows the source message within O of D squared log N slots. The open question that remains is the existence of a deterministic radio broadcast algorithm using a constant number of bits for the label of each node that completes in O of D plus log squared N slots, matching the lower bound for arbitrarily large labels. Thank you very much for listening to this talk.